Combinations. Now, this is when the order doesn't matter. It's not important what order we pick things in, we'll still get the same outcome. The outcome would be considered the same thing if we reshuffled the things that we had picked, if they were picked in a different order. This is different to permutations. Permutations was where the order makes a difference to the outcome. So this is all about making selections. And for an example, we've got three representatives that will be picked from a form class of 25 students. We want to know how many different selections could be made. So the order that we pick those three people doesn't make a difference to the outcome of the group that we have. So for example, if we picked Trent, then Andrew, then Michael, that would be the same as picking Michael, then Trent, then Andrew. It would give us the th same three representatives. The order doesn't make a difference to the outcome. So we've got three spaces to fill. We could think about it like this. So 25 people we could pick for the first place. Once we've picked that one, we've got 24 to choose for the next and 23 for the next. Now that's similar to the perm permutations that we've already had, but because the order doesn't matter, we can arrange those things at the beginning in three factorial ways. So those different orders don't make a difference. We need to divide by how many those first three could be arranged by so that we don't get those repeats happening. So we'll divide by three factorial. This can also be written in one step like this. So putting that three factorial on the bottom. And in general terms, that looks like this. So the number of combinations that can be made of R items from N distinct items is this formula here. Very similar to the permutations one, but we're dividing through by that R factorial on the bottom. So the number of things that got picked, the ways that they could be arranged within themselves, we've got to divide by that so we don't start double counting things where we've got the same thing just in a different order. The fact that it says combinations then tells us that it's the or that order doesn't matter. Another key word is when it talks about making selections, that's an indicator that you're looking at a combination and not a permutation. Okay, so a coach has a squad of 12 basketball players to choose from and he needs to pick a team of five. We want to see how many different teams of five could be put together. Now the order's not important because if we picked person A, B, C, D, E, or people, those five would be the same if we put them in a different order. So we do 12, choose five. We want combinations because the order doesn't matter. So we have that C there instead of the P that we saw in the previous video. So using that formula, we get 792. Now remember, there is a button on your calculator to do this. We actually used this before with um, the binomial um, expansion. And now you can see where that that uh, calculation actually comes from. So we'll go through a few examples. Ian's got four suits and seven shirts and he's packing for a conference. He needs to take two, sh two suits and three shirts. We want to see how many different combinations he could pack to take away with him. So he's got um, four suits to choose from and he's picking two. He's got seven shirts to choose from and he's choosing three. So we've got four choose two times seven choose three. Times those together, we get 210. Okay, next example. Now we're looking at the word dinosaur. We want how many selections of five letters could be made from that word, but with some restrictions on them. So five letters from the word dinosaur that contain both D and R. So we've got five spaces to fill. D and R have to take up two of them. So we're really only looking at filling those three spaces. So if we take out the D and the R, we'll be left with six letters to choose from and we're choosing three. So it's six choose three. There are 20 ways to do that. And all of these selections that don't contain S or A so if we think about that word, we just take out the S and the A. They're not possible options for us to be able to pick. So we're trying to do, um, from the six remaining letters, we need to pick five of them. So there are six ways to do that. Okay, this is an important example. Um, the reason this is different, we're looking at how many selections of three letters can be made from the word Hobbit. The difference here is that we've got two Bs. So... 
what we need to do is we are going to consider what happens when you have no Bs, one B or two Bs in our selection. We can't just do six choose three because of that repeated B there, it kind of messes things up. So we need to consider the different cases that could happen. So the first case is that we would pick no Bs at all. So what we're really doing is choosing three letters from H, O, I or T. So that's four choose three. The next case would be if we pick one B, that means that we've got a B and two spaces to fill. So those two spaces would we would need to pick two from the word the letters H O I T. So that'd be four choose two. And the third case where we've got two Bs, so we'd have two Bs and one space to fill. So we're choosing one from H O I T, and that'd be four choose one. And we've got all of those three things situations there and we'll add each of those together to get our total number of ways that we could select three letters from the word hobbit.